Is it there? Oh, there we go. There we go. Welcome, my God, look at you all with your balloon. Welcome, we can't believe you're, we really can't believe you're all here. Just look at you, I can't even describe the feeling I have looking around this theater right now. Um, thank you so much for joining us, for the Latino, for joining the Latino and Latina Theater Commons and our partners in crime, the Chicago Alliance of Theater Artists. or Alta, Teatro Vista, HowlRound, and the Theater School at DePaul University for the LTC Carnaval 2015. <laughs> for those of you who don't know, the Latino Latina Theater Commons is a movement. We are a network of passionate, committed Latina and Latino theater makers from around the country who donate our time, resources, attention, and experience to forward Latino and Latina theater as central to the health and vitality of the American theater. We are so thrilled that you have come from 30 states, Washington, D.C., and Puerto Rico, to join us in celebrating these 12 new Latino Latina plays and their 12 mind-bogglingly talented authors. One of the LTC's core missions is to promote the full aesthetic plurality of Latino theater. We intend to blow open your idea of what, Latino, of what a Latino and Latina play is. Because Latino, as you all know, is not one thing. We come from many cultures. The writers whose work you will see this weekend alone claim their roots in Mexico, Mexico, Puerto Rico, El Salvador. The directors are Cuban, Colombian, Puerto Rican, and Mex Mexican. And the nearly four dozen, Chica four dozen Chicago Latino and Latina actors claim roots in, well, nearly every country in Latin America. Aesthetically, you will experience everything from straight ahead realism, to magical realism, to a deeply personal bilingual performance piece, to an adult fairy tale, to an explosion of Fellini's satiricon, to a spoken word romance, a docudrama, a theatrical graphic novel, a musical, an historic drama, and a riff on the future fallout of the Grapes of Wrath. <laughs> <laughs> and these 12 pieces are just the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> These 12 pieces are just the tip of the iceberg. We received just under 100 submissions from some of the very best writers in the nation for this festival. And if you count, you will find over 200 playwrights' names out in that lobby. And if you know even three of them, you will recognize the aesthetic, genre-bending diversity of the work. We believe that the breadth, depth, and vitality of Latina and Latino work comes directly from the embedded plurality of our experience. Latino and Latina theater artists are bi or tri or many cultural, and we seek to find narrative structures that articulate the complexity, the lack of linearity, the explosive poetry of living in that dynamic space between cultures. In that way, Latino, Latia, Latino theater signals the dramaturgy of the theater to come. As our nation becomes more and more mixed, as we are less and less able to check boxes on the census, we will want stories whose structures and range mirror the multiplicity of this great nation. When you watch the work this weekend, you are experiencing a harbinger. Because make no mistake, the Latino Theater Commons believes that Latino theater is right now before your very eyes, giving birth to the new American theater. I have some folks we need to thank before I pass on the mic. First, Carnaval 2015 is made possible by the generosity and support of the John D. and Catherine T. MacArthur Foundation and the Joyce Foundation. Additional support, let's give a shout out. Andrew W. Mellon Foundation, the Ford Foundation, and the National Association of Latino Arts and Cultures. A round of applause for them. <laughs> Second, the Commons is not an institution nor an organization. It is a nationwide collective of participants guided by a steering committee of volunteers. Volunteers. Will the members of the LTC steering committee who are in the house please stand up? <laughs> Please 
please stay standing. By a theater. There is no staff, no marketing person or development person or literary manager, any of that. This event was produced by a small army of volunteers that include the LTC Carnival Task Force. We're standing, stay standing, <laughs> along with our producing partners, the Chicago Alliance of Latino Theater Artists, or ALTA, and the Atro Vista, who serve as the host committee for this event. <laughs> student body. I am a proud, proud member of this institution. If you are faculty or staff at the theater school or a theater school student volunteer, will you please stand? In May 2012, when the LTC was founded by a small group of Latino and Latina theater artists, we laid out five dreams, one of which was to host a biannual festival of new Latino and Latina plays. At the time, we didn't know where we'd do it, but I knew that back in Chicago, we had broken ground on this new building and would open it in 2013. So I was like, well, I think, I think we can host it. And as the LTC was raising awareness and money for its upcoming activities, we just kind of started saying that we were hosting a festival of new Latino plays at the Peter School of Hawaii University. And we started saying it a lot. It showed up in the LA Times and on HowlRound and even a small show of paper too. And I got this email from our dean saying, um, what did we do? I am so deeply and profoundly grateful to Dean John Colbert mm -hmm. for jumping aboard this crazy train and putting the full support of the Theatre School at DePaul University behind Carnival 2015. An internationally renowned lighting and set designer, a humble but nonetheless visionary leader and my mentor, ladies and gentlemen, the Dean of the Theatre School, John Colbert. <laughs> Professor Lisa Portes. <laughs> so, hello, and welcome to our artistic home. While it's new, we're not. <laughs> we're happy to say that we've been around for a while, training the next generation, generations of theater artists in all disciplines since our founding as the Goodman School of Drama in 1925. And I've been the dean, no, not since 1925, <laughs> but since 2001. And one might assume that during my tenure, I've had occasion to reflect, sometimes acutely, on the challenges that come with supporting and training the next generation of theater artists. We didn't always need a smartphone policy in the classroom or deal with helicopter parents, but some challenges that we face are most likely the same ones that were faced in 1925. Challenges inherent in the delicate art of teaching artistry and knowing when to take the training wheels off. <laughs> we have always been dedicated to training our conservatory students so they know how to make theater, how to collaborate, how to create a vision, and translate it to a reality. We empower them to value the importance of bringing people into the theater as a place of community, of exchange, of vision and imagination. We train them to be professionals who believe that the theater can inform and transform us about the human condition. Today our students deserve <coughs> and demand from us a new set of tools. Today we are challenged and compelled 
to help make them a theater, to help them make a theater that is inherently inclusive of diverse ideas, people, and voices. Today we invite them to celebrate and generate new work that reflects new social realities and untold histories. In other words, we train them in hopes that one day they will become just like you. <laughs> you are here to share and experience new plays from Latina and Latino playwrights to celebrate these voices and great works so that you can share them in your own communities. You are here because you are dedicated to coming together in dialogue, artistry, scholarship, and in celebration. You are making the new American theater. And that is why we are so grateful to have you here at the theater school, because you are role models, because your mission aligns so closely with our values, and because the theater that our students will create will be built upon yours. We are privileged to be able to share our new artistic home with you for these few days. So on behalf of the entire theater school community, thank you for being here, for being in Chicago, and for doing what you do. Thank you for your commitment to the national dialogue surrounding Latina and Latino work in our theaters, and new work in our theaters, and underrepresented voices in our theaters. Thank you for being collaborators, and movers, and shakers, and all around awesome people. <laughs> Have a great carnival. the Audience Development Manager for the League of Chicago Theaters. She also oversees, in that role, marketing for Hot Ticks, all-important ticketing program, and works with over 100 companies a year with their cooperative advertising program. Mary Elena. Good morning. This is the happiest conference room I've ever seen. <laughs> you figured it out. Uh, it is my sincere privilege to welcome you all to Carnival on behalf of the League of Chicago Theaters and its 240 plus member theaters. From Hyde Park to Jefferson Park to Rogers Park, and even theater in the parks, our city's industry has an impressive breadth and depth. Like I tell anyone who will listen, no matter your interest or your preference, we have something for you. Chicago is home to companies representing, among others, African American, Latin American, and Asian American communities, Southeast Asians, Irish heritage and culture, uh, Polish culture, LGBT issues, and even Scandinavian playwrights. We have companies dedicated to musicals, comedy, burlesque, cabaret, um, dance, physical theater, circus, magic, performance art, classical music, Shakespeare, new works, literary adaptations, devised work, and a number of children and family theaters hard at work cultivating the next generation of theater goers and theater makers. We have itinerant theaters, storefront theaters, commercial theaters, and Tony winning regional theaters, some of which dedicate valuable staff, energy, and time funding festivals, developing and showcasing works by voices that are often unheard or underrepresented. With the scope of work across our stages and the diverse talent pool calling Chicago home, I can't think of a better city to hold Carnival. Thank you to Teatro Vista, Victory Gardens, uh, Goodman, Alta, and DePaul for serving as local hosts and representatives of this beautiful city. To those of you from out of town, a special welcome. I hope you find my colleagues and my city to be a uniquely collaborative communi uh, cooperative community, ready to listen, to share, and to learn. And while it is my job to get as many people to go see theater as possible, <laughs> um, and I definitely invite you to uh, catch as much theater as you can in your copious amounts of free time during this conference. <laughs> uh, I will also point out that Chicago has much else to offer. We have world-class dining, and drinking. Pizza. Uh, we do. Lumonati is up the street. Fantastic. Um, a storied sports legacy, including a Cubs team that is legitimately not bad this year. <laughs> so if you catch a game, you might actually be taking in a part of history this year. Um, renowned cultural institutions, the Chicago History Museum and the Museum of Science and Industry are my personal favorites. Uh, architecture tours, food tours, a bevy of street festivals this weekend. 
by the way, is the Chicago Hot Sauce Festival and the Chicago Margarita Festival. So, uh, 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 there is much to do here on any given day of the week. Like I said, the city does have something for everyone, and it welcomes you with open arms. Uh, from a meeting at HowlRound to convenings at Emerson College and now here to this Playwright Festival in Chicago, we are uh, so glad to have you. We are so intrigued by where the work goes from here. Uh, good luck, thank you for being here, and welcome. Mm -hmm. And now here is Holly Carl from HowlRound. Mm -hmm. So we've got we've come so far, everyone. Uh, so uh, I want to just say, um, uh, you know, one of the great uh, one of the great organizers and the farm worker Cesar Chavez. He has this wonderful quote that I wanted to start with this morning: "From the depth of need and despair, people can work together, can organize themselves to solve their own problems and fill their own needs with dignity and strength." In 1990, in 19. 88, I wish I had graduated in 1998, but it was actually 1988, um, the year I graduated from college, I went on a hunger strike in solidarity with Cesar Chavez, who fasted that year for 36 days in the middle of what was the third call for a strike on California table grapes that had first begun in 1965. I was living in a Catholic worker house in Los Angeles, and our community each took a day or two to join the fast. We spent a lot of time protesting in support of the, of the boycott, standing in front of lo local grocery stores, handing out flyers, and talking to the FBI guys who were following us around. Uh, <laughs> true. Uh, it, was in, it was in part the work of Chavez that inspired me to think about a life devoted to justice. And I think about his spirit in this room, his work that is, uh, uh, the work of his community birthing the work of um, El Teatro Campesino and the leadership of Luis Valdez. <laughs> and Lupe Valdez. <laughs> and of course, Kenan Valdez. <laughs> and how many of us in this room have been touched by Chavez's call for the necessity of people working together to organize themselves to solve their own problems and fill their own needs. Chavez's words describe perfectly the work of the Latino Theater Commons, a group of artists actively joining together, using every resource at their disposal to change the circumstances of their reality in the American theater. When HowlRound helped convene a group of eight Latino artists at the inspiration of Karen Zacharias four years ago, the desire for change, for visibility, for an American theater to be more American was a necessity that needed a plan for action. In a 36-hour stretch, the Latino Theater Commons was formed and a plan was hatched. And today marks an end and a beginning. When we all met in that room four years ago, we talked about a big convening in Boston. Check. <laughs> we talked about an online presence for conversation in Cafe Onda. Check. We talked about an encuentro for full productions made possible by the work of the Los Angeles Theater Center. Check. And we talked about a carnival of new plays that was, by the way, always going to happen at DePaul. <laughs> Check. So, as we, I know, right? So as we enter these next few days together, we celebrate so many voices, past and present, who make this moment possible. I am thinking of those eight people in that room that first day: Karen, Jose Luis Valenzuela, Lisa Cortez. Ann Garcia Romero, Salak Rivas, Antonio Sanera, Enrique Ureta, and Christopher Diaz, and the original steering committee that put together the first convening, and the scholars who have been tracking the history and the timeline, and Brian Herrera writing up that convening in Boston into a beautiful book that will be forever with us, and the incredible work of Commons producer Abigail Vega and HowlRound producer Jamie Gilder. <laughs> Thank you.
and the mentors who are with us in spirit, like Irene Fornes. And I'm not naming enough names, of course, because a commons is always all of the names. It's everyone who is here today, everyone who has written for Cafe Onda, everyone who has lifted this movement to this moment. We must, however, only celebrate for a little while. The work is still massive. The numbers don't add up. Our stages, our theaters, our institutions still don't look right. Mm -hmm. They do not represent who we are as a country of rapidly shifting demographics. They are not a reflection of the complexity of the American story. And the racism that greets us every single morning in our newsfeed is our responsibility. We must find ways to bring the power of our art into the suffering, the opportunity, and the hope before us. So let's love each other all weekend. <laughs> Check. <laughs> let's embrace these beautiful artists in our midst and celebrate their stories. And then Monday, for God's sake, let's sleep in. <laughs> and then Tuesday, let's get back to work. Yeah. <laughs>
que no se vive fácilmente en esta tierra. Pero no olvides que primeramente tú provienes de alguien, que tú desciendes de alguien, que tú naciste por la gracia de alguien, que tú a la vez eres la espina y el retorno de nuestros antepasados, de aquellos que vinieron antes que nosotros y de aquellos y aquellas que se han ido a vivir al más allá. Remember that one does not live easily upon this earth, but do not forget that above all, you have come from someone, that you descend from someone, that you were born by the grace of someone, that you are both the spine and the offspring of our ancestor, of those who came before us, and those who have gone on to live in the great beyond. Keep that flame, bring it back up to the hills. <laughs> and this is my gift to you. And you can take it for the rest of your life. Anytime. Anytime you have doubt, give you strength, let it go. And you will. And this is my gift to you. Okay, thank you. Amen. and then get to work on that vision. These people being Tania Saracho, who is just making things happen for Latinos in Hollywood as we speak, if this is being, um, you know, if it's being, um, what am I trying to say? Live stream, mm -hmm. uh, we're sending her a big hug, mm -hmm. and her spirit is with us. And also Ricardo Gutierrez, who I know, Ricardo, shake your balloon for us. I know you're here. They imparted on us their vision, and then we got to work, a la chamba, right? Um, and that chamba has brought us to where we are today right now. We're a service organization housed at Victory Gardens Theater. We have su subsidiary programming that includes unified auditions, inviting large and small theater companies to see only Latino talent in Chicago. We have a Semillero Playwriting Circle, which is also housed at Victory Gardens Theater and culminates in a nine month writing process with staged readings. We already had our first of two installments of that. Um, so these are all major accomplishments that we've been able to celebrate this year alone. Isaac, am I missing anything else? We do socials, because we always gotta lure them with a little <laughs> bit of drinking, and we, and we have conference, so after we get them the drinks, we gotta get to the hard discussions, right? Um, I wanna thank you guys so much for being here. Um, I, in so many ways, many of you are driven here by the same desire that started Alta, the motivation to change, um, the, change the landscape of the stories that are being told um, have an active agency in how those stories are being told. We're gonna see all kinds 
of Palabras, just as, we, just as Jose Luis mentioned earlier today. We're gonna be celebrating those. Um, and I know many of you are sitting there right now wondering, why do we have a balloon? Whose birthday is it? Is it Santa Delgado's birthday? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> she will thank me later when everyone keeps saying happy birthday at Noche Victoria. Mm. So I'm gonna pass the torch off right now to Isaac who will now tell us what are these for and what are we doing? So before we get into it, actually, you know, there's so many beautiful faces in, 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 in the house tonight. Um, can we just, can we get some house lights on for a minute, please? And Michael, our beloved photographer, who's gonna be very busy this week, let's give him a quick round of applause. <laughs> short and very quick and go. <laughs> 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 